presentation. Ja. Kom her. Ja. Og så tryk F5. Og så F5. So, Pedro, please. Thank you very much. I'm uh, very happy to be here sharing with you some uh, uh, considerations about this crisis. I'm very lucky uh, to be second after such a nice presentation. I'm going to rely a lot on Rune's uh, 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 reflections here. Um, I think I have a rather more pessimistic view of what's going on. And I think that uh, in this case, theory is uh, crucial. A good reading of this crisis is, is vital in order to have the, the right uh, uh, political agenda for the progressive forces. Mm -hmm. I believe that we are in the middle of a very uh, delicate situation. <coughs> a, charged with um, a kind of ontological intensity because we are in the middle of a historical bifurcation. We are in the middle of a situation in which what uh, each of us do matters. Because either we have um, a more humanistic and democratic uh, outcome of this crisis or we are going to enter into a long period of uh, degradation of civilization. I, I know that this, this sounds a little bit dramatic, but I'm going, I'm tr I try to argue with some of the figures that uh, uh, Rune has presented here and some of the um, uh, regularities of the dynamics of, of capital. So we we are in the middle of this long-term uh, crisis, structural crisis of capitalism. This is not a financial crisis. This is a kind of a synchronization of different type of, of system cri systems crisis. Uh, different type of systems have entered in, in crisis out of different type of rhythms and different type of dynamics. And today, the combination of those uh, uh, crisis processes had rendered a very delicate situation in terms of the structure of power. And, and at the end of the day, the problem of agency, the problem of the historical subject, is key to define the outcome of this crisis. We are in the middle of this attempt of capital to overcome the structural crisis that started actually at the middle of the 60s in terms of uh, the technological shift that in other periods of, of, of similar uh, structural uh, uh, shaking have uh, rendered uh, what uh, some, some analysts uh, mention as the, the phase A of the contractive cycle. In this case, capital has failed to achieve another stage of accumulation, and that is precisely the problem today. What is what has imploded is the remedy to the crisis, and we have to understand this, this issue. We are in the middle of a tremendous process of accumulation of capital and accumulation of power, in which money and finance are the key mechanisms of the financial uh, and monopolic oligarchy to accrue more power against the colossal expropriation of the self-determination of the individuals, of the collectivities, and the nations. Crisis, financial crises, are the instrument for these expropriations. Crises are not technical situations. Crises are not something coming from natural phenomena. Of course, there are long-term processes involved in this situation, out of the domain of any person. But there are some demolition experts that could uh, 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 channel the destructive forces in the system in order to profit out of them. So we have to understand that not only the crisis of capitalism, 
but we have to understand also the capitalism of crisis. How can they profit out of these difficulties? How can they change the balance of power between capital and labor, the heterogeneous forms of capital, the heterogeneous forms of labor, in order to increase profitability, in order to increase concentration of power? So crises are structural mechanisms of class discipline. And that is why you, in Europe, have to look very closely to the experiences in Latin America, in Southeast Asia, in Africa, of austerity policies. As Rune has uh, mentioned, there is no evidence at all of any technical efficacy of the austerity policies in order to solve the budgetary <coughs> problems. The real purpose of those policies is to transform the conditions for reaction of the peoples and the nations. To push for very easy and very profitable privatization processes and to dismantle most of the social context of the welfare state. To break down the spine of the bargaining power of the working classes facing capital. So we need, as the basic non-exclusive tasks for the progressive forces to change the relationship between finance and production. And when, when I mention production, I'm not uh, 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 restricting the, the, the concept to the capitalist logic of production. There are other logics of production that are not capitalist right now, including the small and medium-sized enterprises, including the cooperatives, including some ethnic uh, articulations like the indigenous communities in the case of Ecuador and Latin America, etc., etc. We need to transform the articulation between private capital, the economy of the state, and these heterogeneous forms of production that we can call popular economy. We have to break down this myth of the dichotomy between state and market because markets and state have served the same masters all the time. So we need to transform the nature of the state and we need to transform the nature of the markets in order for them to serve the interests of the people. And finally, we need to transform the international division of labor. We need to transform the content of this uh, globalization process. It is impossible to get out of this crisis of capitalism without getting out of this capitalism in crisis. And this is, this is I think it's very important to, 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 to assess the level of gravity of what is going on. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to present here uh, different levels of, of, uh, of uh, depth of this crisis from the most exogenous one, from the most uh, superficial uh, causes of the crisis, those exogenous situations that of course play some role. I agree with you that this is, not, uh, this is not the main cause of the crisis. There is a lot of corruption involved here, a lot of incompetence, a lot of excesses, a lot of negligence, and that has to be uh, prosecuted. But this is not, of course, the cause of the crisis. However, I think it's very, very telling the fact that opposite to what happened 20 years ago, for example, with the <coughs> savings and loans crisis in the United States, in which the prosecutors had more than 5,000 uh, uh, judici ju judiciary processes against the bankers that rendered uh, more than 1,000 penal convictions. Today, you just have seven out of which only two people has been chained, Mr. Madoff and Mr. Stanford. And of course, the, the amount of fraud, the overwhelming evidence of delinquency, of criminality, both in Europe and in the United States, is correlated to the amount of resources involved in this situation. We are going to see some orders of magnitude. So we can go into the details to these other types of 
of levels of cyclicality, levels of crisis uh, 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 mechanisms, including the endogenous crisis, the, the different type of uh, inventory cycles, the, the, the cycle of the, of the fixed capital, uh, etc., that has been studied in the literature. There are some other type of crises linked to the uh, what some analysts call the mode of regulation, that is the mix between policies and institutions. Of course, we need to re-regulate the financial markets. We have to end up the, the neoliberal policies. Uh, but this is not enough to get out of, 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 of this crisis of capital. Uh, uh, however, what you can you can see, um, you, we, we are witnessing today, is beyond uh, uh, beyond the, the, the rhetorics of, of the of the leadership. Uh, you have a, a, an exacerbation of the neoliberal agenda everywhere. You have the WTO agenda, the Doha Round, and the Pascal Ami uh, social, socialist leadership. Uh, uh, a furthering of the neoliberal deregulation processes everywhere. He's trying to uh, obtain some early harvest in, ter in terms of the negotiations, trying to have uh, such uh, an outrageous resolutions like uh, the total deregulation of the accountancy norms. <coughs> in the middle of this every overwhelming evidence of accounting fraud, by the banks, by the uh, rating agencies, by the corporations, by the states, including the case of Greece. Could you imagine which, which could be the possibility of, of, uh, of real regulation, the possibility of, of real monitoring of the financial system control if you have with these transnational banks one balance sheet in one country and other balance sheet in another country without any possibility of, of uh, supervisory consolidation. And they are pushing for total deregulation in the financial, in the, in the, in the, in the national accounting uh, 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 at the WTO. So they are opening the space for the offshores, for the elusive practices in terms of fiscality, in terms of in terms of uh, prudential regulation, etc., etc. At the same time that they are pushing for austerity policies, uh, going uh, further and further with the neoliberal agenda, more privatization, more deregulation, more uh, profitability on the hands of the monopoly capital. This is not going to be solved either. Changing the regime of accumulation. That is a, a, a much more profound uh, uh, essentiality in the functioning of the system related to the international division of, la of labor, the, dy the dynamic patterns of income distribution, the relationship, the, the relationship between capital and non-capital logics. Of course, this is going to change the conditions of, 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 of uh, the economy, but this is not even sufficient to transform the, the current crisis. This is not even possible today, it's not even possible to uh, overcome this crisis of capitalism just changing the mode of production. Today, we have to change the mode of life. That means this is a much deeper concept of the relationship between man and nature, the relationship between the, the no, no Oscar, the, the relationship between the, the, the human community within itself in order to actually face the challenges that we are facing today. That is the, 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 the gravity of the conjuncture that we are facing because the ecological problems, the demographic problems, the democratic problems are totally related to the roots of the current way of civilization is the uh, occidental if you want to the judeo-christian way of life that is a question today is not only the capitalist mode of production is the whole civilizatory perspective that is at stake today 
So let me, let me take into account uh, uh, most of what uh, Rune has mentioned today in terms of placing the level of the gravity of the trends that we are living today. This is an overproduction crisis, an overproduction of goods, but also an overproduction of capitals. And this is very, very key to understand the logic and the limits and the, and the, the compulsory uh, uh, trends in terms of, of power. <coughs> Capitalists could go on holidays. Capitals can't. They are compulsory doomed to reinvest themselves. They are compulsory doomed to reach for further and further ways of accumulation. And the level of concentration and centralization of capital is allowing them to reach for or to look for higher and higher rates of profitability. This is just one graph of the United States a percentage of utilization of industrial capacity in which you can see the long-term situation in terms of uh, uh, the, the idle capacity in the industrial apparatus. Of course, this is an endogenous variable, because if you do not utilize all the capacity that you have already uh, installed, the level of increase of those productive capabilities in the next period is going to be reduced. So you can see the same time of the same the same type of trends all around the nucleus of the system during the last three four decades. What is going on as the response to this situation is looking forward mechanisms of retrieving profitability through the process of delocalization of capital. That means trying to produce the same or more with lower labor costs, with lower <coughs> nature costs, with lower taxing costs. But it is impossible at the end of the day to produce more generating less income. And that is precisely one of the key limitations of the margin of maneuver of capital. More so, the rate of introduction of technological and scientific applications into the labor process has achieved such a level of velocity that the fixed capital invested cannot obtain the rate of amortization enough in order to recover the investment. That means that you have an important part of your machinery, of your plant, installed as a sum cost that cannot be uh, uh, remunerated by the market and it renders that technology morally obsolete. That has generalized a process of program obsolescence. It has been in practice during the last uh, uh, 50, 60 years, but in the last, in the last decades, has, it has been the center of the logic of uh, the uh, technologic dynamics. You have very specific niches in the market in which you have uh, include a very important rhythm of uh, uh, technological innovations, but mostly those are related to the military complex, in which you have the direct warranty of the government in a very entrenched relationship of chronic capitalism that uh, reinforces the process of concentration of power and the process of degradation of the democratic values and the republican values overall. All of this process is directly related to this uh, uh, polar social polarization. You can see here the 1% uh, uh, income distribution in the United States out of the, the internal revenue services. And the neoliberal policies had created the conditions that uh, reproduces the level of concentration that you have previous to the previous uh, to the 
unprecedented uh, uh, structural crisis during the 30s. <coughs> this uh, level of concentration has reached more or less uh, almost 19% by the last statistics uh, of 2010. And that you can have the same type of statistics for the rest of the OECD countries. Here you can see how this structural problem reflects in terms of profitability. You have several instruments. You are going to you are, you, you, you have these uh, graphics for you in the aftermath to study one by one the trends. But in this uh, gross line, gross black line, you have one of the macroeconomic approximations to the rate of profit. During the previous regime of accumulation, the Fordist Keynesian regime of accumulation, you have a overall trend to the reduction of uh, the profitability, basically due to the flood of cheap merchandise. <coughs> it's the success of capitalism that had created this captivity of the level of uh, uh, the accumulation process uh, on behalf of the monopoly capital. The neoliberal policies improve the situation of rentability. This profitability, however, has created other type of contradictions, and that is precisely the dead end that we have to face today. The basic mechanisms are related to the configuration of this globalized economy. Delocalization, that is the uh, sequential a translation of the industrial power from the center to the to the uh, first to the reconstruction of Europe after the Second World War with the Marshall Plan, then to the reconstruction of, of Japan, then uh, Taiwan, then the Southeast Asian tigers, and now China and India. And the second feature is related to the financialization. The response to the sunk cost of fixed capital that cannot move facing this very rapid uh, pace in, uh, in uh, technological innovation is precisely to record to financial innovations. The hypertrophy of the speculative apparatus is not an excess of capitalism, is not a matter of personal responsibility uh, alone, it's a structural situation of the system. Let me show you these issues. This, I'm not going to be exhaustive because we don't have the time, but you can see here the difference between the regime of the, 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 the for this Keynesian regime of accumulation in which you have a, a, a co-evolution between the, the share of uh, salaries and wages uh, uh, in the GDP, in this line, and the consumption as a percentage of the GDP. And you have more or less the same uh, evolution until <coughs> the application of the neoliberal policies in which you have uh, this decoupling. The only possibility to sustain rates of growth of GDP with the reduction of the real wages is precisely through credit. But in order to create the conditions for this expansion of credit, you have to break down the previous norms of prudential regulation that supported some level of correspondence between the real economy, the real creation of wealth, and the specific channels of distribution that uh, uh, render this wealth uh, an effective and solvent demand through these mechanisms of financial innovation. The other, uh, 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 the other side of the same coin is this uh, dislocation between the rate of, of profit that I, we saw in the, in the previous slide and the rate of accumulation, that means the gross formation of, root of, uh, of, of capital as a percentage of the GDP. You have more or less the same co-evolution during the previous uh, regime of accumulation, but after the neoliberal period, you have an increase 
in profits that is not reflected uh, with an increase with investment, with productive investment. This gap between these two trades is precisely the increase of possibilities of financial investments that are not related to the real economy. So, these two structural trades have configured a new type of environment in which the representations of the real capital, of fixed capital, through the double accounting of the balance sheet has been multiplied in fractal terms. Derivatives are, are precisely that. What Rune was uh, describing here is this process, this frenetic process, the frenzy of creating representations of representations of representations of the real wealth. not only the subprime mortgages, is the whole uh, synthetic reproduction of these uh, claims upon the real wealth through the derivative processes, the speculative apparatus. You can see here, just an, as an example, I don't have the time to go into the details of this, just as an example, you can see here in black the trend of the rate of growth of the real economy represented by the G global GDP. And you can see that uh, during the neoliberal regime of accumulation, you have lower rates of growth of the real economy, but also much larger volatility, much larger uncertainty. <clears throat> As a contrast, in this orange line, you can see the rate of growth of derivatives. These are not exhaustive statistics, but this is just <coughs> the derivatives uh, registered by the Office of the Controller of the Currency of the United States. It's just one fraction of the situation. Right now, the estimates are more or less, in order to have an order of magnitude, is that the GDP is $63 trillion. The total debt, what uh, Rune referred to in the, in the in the previous ratios is 117 trillion dollars. It's double the total GDP. But the total derivatives are not included in these statistics and are almost 1.5 trillion dollars. That means that means 1500 versus 63. That's the order of magnitude. So it is not possible to dilute these structural insolvency problems through a liquidity policy, so liquidity injections or inflation. It is not possible to do it. This is a black hole, a structural black hole embedded in the functioning of the financial apparatus in the North. More so, the basic mechanisms of macroeconomic balance are not functioning anymore. Remember, the most important issue for the macroeconomists today, for the conventional uh, uh, economics at the, at the faculty and the policy makers, is related to global imbalances. Which is the major global imbalance today? Which is the major issue? The deficits in the United States and in Europe financed by China and Asia and the emerging economies. This is not reflected in the effective financial transactions. This is spaghetti, bone, represents the, the main uh, flows of financial transactions of uh, the year 2006. And you cannot see the loans from China to the United States, for example. As Rune mentioned, this is a self-referent matrix in which the financial centers are lending to itself and to other financial centers. And the, the whole uh, mass, 
the most important majority of uh, those uh, financial innovations are just loans over the loans, over the loans, over the loans. And that is why it is impossible to solve the problem with the classical demand of the progressive forces of nationalization of the banks. This is impossible. Because as you can witness in the case of Ireland, you are nationalized, you are nationalizing a black hole without end. The level of debts that you are going to enter is a Ponzi scheme without limit, without boundaries. So you need to create some division between the, the part of the finance related to the productive process, and you have to protect this part in order to, to protect and to defend the employment, from the other part of finance, that is the majority of finance. And most of this finance is out of balances, out of the balance sheet. That is the financial derivatives. If you do not apply this type of laws like the last Steagall Act in the United States to return to the type of regulation that you have uh, during the, the, the Franklin Delano Roosevelt administration, the danger to involve the whole economy into this dynamic of crisis is immediate. Because during the last period, this process of fractal reproduction of policy schemes has rendered the shadow banking, like you can see in this, in this uh, situation, the basic mechanism of liquidity for the growth of the bank. So you have the correspondence to this uh, Ponzi scheme pyramidation is the inverted pyramid in which the vertex is the liquidity process coming out of the creation of money by the central banks or through other black market mechanisms like money laundering. And we have to be very aware of this situation when you see all the rumors about the functioning and the relationship between the black market and the speculative activities of the most important institutions of the financial system is because this structural <coughs> needs of the system to provide liquidity. Let me just finish with a couple of minutes about this. Uh, most of the, of the structure of power now is related to the reproduction and the basis of this reproduction is uh, the profitability through the financial markets, as you can see in these dynamics, the financial profits have a, a rate of growth much more important than the GDP and the total growth of, of, of profits in general, and the importance of the public debt in general as a rent-seeking strategy of this self-reference, uh, self-referent uh, uh, financial and speculative apparatus at the global level. That is why today this uh, old differentiation between the metropolis and the colonial system has changed because they are colonizing the national space of the, their own metropolis. And that is the, precisely the type of processes that you are living today in Europe, in the United States, and also in Japan, in which they are using the Fukushima uh, shock in order to change the relationship between the public banks and the privatization that is going to render the public debt in a sustainable burden upon the population. So, facing this delicate situation, we are pushing, we are presenting the needing, urgent need of a new financial architecture as a necessary but not sufficient condition for the transformation. We have an urgent planetary agenda that includes the common tax, that includes the moratory, the auditing of the moratory of the external debt, the blocking of the blackmailing power of the IMF, banning short selling and other uh, speculative mechanisms, and another global system of reserves based on the special going rights, not on the monopoly of the dollar, and the, block, and the block regional monetary arrangements like what we had built up in Latin America that includes a new type of uh, development bank 
a new type of central banking as an alternative safety network to the IMF, and finally, a new type of monetary transactionality realm based systems of uh, payment compensation, a kind of clearing union in which money is directly related to the real economy, avoiding any type of hypertrophy in terms of speculative priorities. In the first uh, pillar, we have already built up Banco del Sur, that so far has uh, obtained the signature of seven presidents in South America and the ratification of four parliaments. In the second case, we are pushing for the Fondo del Sur, for this uh, new system of, uh, of network among the central banks in order to defend the processes that we are living, that is not only related to the financial and macroeconomic stability, but also to the democratic stability of the continent. And finally, the regional fiduciary money has already started one and a half year ago through the SUCRE, the unitary system of regional compensation that so far has engaged countries like Ecuador, Venezuela, Bolivia, and Cuba. Uh, we can go upon those mechanisms to other type of tasks of immediate demand, like changing the global governance to engage in re-regulation of the financial system and to create a new sovereign system of credit upon this global regional arrangement. In order to recover democracy, in order to recover real capacity of deciding things facing these uh, hostile uh, maneuvers of the, of the financial speculators, we need to create these basic premises in order to have some level of defense of the interest of the people. Thank you very much.